Na koutou katoa. Greetings to you all. No my heart and my welcome to the second series now of the Pattern Reader. We're continuing on. We've identified our Pyramid Society in Aotearoa. We're not operating right. Whole communities are not operating right. They're a form society of classes. Rich, middle and poor class. All set up, of course, to look after the rich. It's a Pyramid Society. We talked about um, uh, the interpreting of Treaty of Waitangi and those three dominating authorities uh, controlling everything and hiding in the background. Uh, we're going to move on now. We're going to identify that under religion, intellectualism and these uniforms, we've, they've established a whole system, people. It's a system that works against the indigenous, racist system that was established here for a land claim, a land takeover claim now, people. It's a system that starves us, a system that keeps us homeless, a system that keeps us unemployed, a system that jails us and that targets us for jowling if we do not conform to their society. It's a system that treats us and medicates us, that labels us as having a mental illness. It's a system that threatens its constant law book assertion. It's a system who's set up their media to um, target the, the indigenous, the Māori people, uh, especially on their front page reportings and their reportings, racially targeting uh, our indigenous people. So we've identified a whole system set up here now that works against you and I who do not fit in. We do not fit in, people. And it's time to address it, as I shared with you about a Māori queen to hold the scales of justice. So why the scales of justice? Originally the scales of justice began as the scales of balance. And it's right there in our history and the stories passed on about the separating of Ranganui, the Sky Father, and the separating of Papatūnuki, the Earth Mother, how our world began. They have had to have held the scales of balance. So we're talking about the highest order and how to start a new world. And that scales of balance has now transformed. It has had to be used and changed to become the scales of justice to judge the arrogance of mankind, the genealogy lines of arrogance working against us, the true lines. Thank you. I wanted to include uh, in reading these patterns of history, it was important when reading and interpreting the Treaty of Waitangi, we also look at the history of England, and I'm talking about the endeavour journeys of Captain Cook, how he was under a command by the British Empire to claim those whole continents for the British Empire, and we have been part of that claim. It's this claim and the endeavour journeys that led to first contact with the indigenous Māori people and indigenous around the world, uh, then to treaties being introduced to be signed, agreements, and their assertion of their authorities, their systems set in place. So that's very important that we make that point clear. Thank you. Tēnā koutou katoa, we're carrying on. I'm holding here the New Zealand Immigration Service booklet given to new immigrants to have some understanding of what nation they're coming into and the people, the indigenous people. It's the Treaty of Waitangi and Immigrants and, uh, and Migration, sorry, Migrants. So we've got immigrants, we've got migrants. What are they? Anyway, and we've got our little bo booklet here. First, we'll go through some of the pages quickly. Beautiful map of our Aotearoa, our whenua. Bit of information there about the land that they're arriving to. An important event that took part place, the signing of Te Riti of Waitangi. Uh, and a map, of course, of our beautiful whenua. Again, uh, pictures of our beautiful people. These, this booklet's given out to new immigrants to help them understand uh, Aotearoa, New Zealand. An introduction to our nation. And here we are, we've got the... Uh, text, the Treaty of Waitangi text here, and that is what I'm going to start reading, so we can have a look. 
And here we go. Here's our first, the preamble of Tiritia Waitangi. And we also include here the Māori version, preamble of Tiritia of Waitangi. Knowing that full understand, understand people that our people never had a written language. So imagine the confusion, imagine the deception, misunderstanding of signing a piece of paper where they were very unsure because we never had a written language uh, in our history. Now my heart my once again, continuing with the, uh, the pattern reader series and the reading of Te Riti of Waitangi, reading and interpreting Te Riti of Waitangi. Kia ora, how are you going? Hey, we're, so we're going to go straight uh, to reading the actual uh, preamble of the Te Riti of Waitangi and there are the three articles that came in after that preamble of Te Riti of Waitangi based upon the understanding that prior to the treaty uh, being introduced the, um, that Captain Cook was in Deva Junis, where he was under command to claim whole continents of this world or claim the lands of the indigenous for the British Empire. So that is the first injustice in the order of history. We're moving on now. We're going to go straight there, people. We're going to go straight. Here we are. Uh, and this is taken out from the book of, for new immigrants. So all new immigrants that come into the country, they receive this little booklet that welcomes them and it in also includes the Treaty of Waitangi text. Official English version. Here, the preamble of Te Riti of Waitangi. We're going to start reading. Her Majesty Queen Victoria, Her Majesty Victoria, Queen of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland, regarding with her royal favour, with her regarding with her royal favour, the native chiefs and tribes in New Zealand and anxious to protect their just rights and property, to secure to them the enjoyment of peace and good order, has deemed it necessary in consequence of the great number of Her Majesty's subjects who have already settled in New Zealand and the rapid extension of immigration there it's about both from Europe and Australia so Europe and Australia people let's be aware of this which is still in progress to con constitute and appoint a functionary properly authorized to treat with the Aborigines so we're being called Aborigines now instead of the indigenous acknowledged as the indigenous Maori people we're being likened unto the Aboriginals of Australia of New Zealand for the carry on for the recognition of Her Majesty's sovereign authority over the whole or any part of those islands Her Majesty therefore being desirous to establish a settled form of civil government with a view to avert the evil consequences which must result from the absence of the necessary laws and institutions alike to the native population and her subjects, to her subjects, has been graciously pleased to empower and authorise me, William Hobson. There we go, William Hos Hobson, uh, the captain. A captain in Her Majesty's Royal Navy. There we go, there's the military. Consul and Lieutenant Governor of such parts of New Zealand as may be or hereafter shall be ceded to Her Majesty to invite the Confederate and the and Independent Chiefs of New Zealand to concur in the following article and conditions. There we go, there is the preamble people just read quickly through and over here we have our Māori version keeping in mind the Māori version on paper, that how the indigenous Māori people, this is why we never had a written language. We never had a written language and imagine, because if we never had a written language, imagine viewing this on paper then. We were not a people that uh, operated under everything by a book, instructions. So imagine the confusion, all right, imagine the, um, being unsure what to do and just signing it anyway, not really understanding, not having an understanding, but we're here to bring in a better understanding. This is what the teachings are all about so that we can understand uh, with that understanding, as I said earlier on, that the endeavour journeys of Captain Cook 
were to claim whole continents for New Zealand. So any, uh, this led to first contact, then to the uh, introduction of Te Riti, a Treaty of Waitangi, and that is our preamble read for you today. So here we are, we're on article, the first article, article the first, the Chiefs of the Confederation of the United Tribes of New Zealand and the separate and independent chiefs who have not become members of the Confederation uh, cede to Her Majesty the Queen of England, absolutely and without reservation, all the rights and powers of sovereignty which the said confederation or individual chiefs respectively exercise or possess or may be supposed to exercise or possess over their respective territories as the sovereigns there, as the sole sovereigns thereof. So let's highlight especially this area where they're saying and the separate and independent chiefs who have not become members of the confederation cede to her majesty so how can they say that these independent chiefs who have not become the members of the confederation still cede to the, her majesty the queen of it this uh, people highlights a dictatorship So here we are, we're on the second article, we're going to read through it quickly. Her Majesty the Queen of England confirms and guarantees to the chiefs and tribes of New Zealand and to the respective families and individuals thereof the full, exclusive and undisturbed possession of their lands and estates, forests, fisheries and other properties which they may collectively or individually possess so long as it is their wish and desire to retain the same in their possession. But the chiefs of the United Tribes and the individual chiefs yield to Her Majesty the exclusive rights of preemption over such lands such as the proprietors thereof may be disposed to alienate at such prices as may be agreed upon between the respective proprietors and persons appointed by Her Majesty to treat with them in that behalf. There you go, there's our reading of our second, second article, people. Okay, we're continuing on now with our third article, the final article of Te Riti o Waitangi, uh, in consideration thereof Her Majesty the Queen of England extends to the natives of New Zealand her royal protection and imparts to them all the rights and privileges, there you go, of British subjects. Let's just repeat that again uh, because it's very important. It extends to the natives of New Zealand her royal protection and imparts to them all rights and privileges of British subjects. Uh, and it's signed off, of course, by William Hobson, uh, Consul and Lieutenant Governor. There you go. Now, therefore, we, the Chiefs of the Confederation of the United Tribes of New Zealand, being assembled in con Congress at Victoria, oh, okay, in Waitangi, as we, the separate and independent Chiefs of New Zealand, claiming authority over the tribes and territories which are specified after our respective names, having been made fully to understand and understand the provisions of the foregoing treaty accept and enter into the same in the full spirit and meaning thereof and witness of which we have attached our signatures or marks at the places and the dates respectively specified and here we go and it was all signed off except for Except for, let's keep in mind that the Arawa people never signed Tariti or Waitangi. Here's the two documents, the uh, European version, English version, and our Māori version. Of course, next to that, the reading of Tariti or Waitangi. Thank you.